neighborhoods. There are some people, whenever we are growing up, that are always bullies. So when you find the narrative of a bully, it is always someone who um, they will come and look down on you. Maybe um, they think that they are the prettiest uh, group of people in school, or they are the richest people in school, or they are the brightest people in school. So they always come, and there's this child who is always being bullied. And until that time that this child or this person stands up to any of these people, it never changes. So maybe people go through that cycle of bullying and you know, I those people, it's either you're part of them or you keep avoiding them. And I'm sure for most of us, we've uh, gone through such a situation. So it only takes one person who you're so backed at a corner. You know, at some point when, you, when, when someone backs you at a corner, the only thing you can do is push out. When you reach a rock bottom, there is nowhere else to go. So you can go down and go down and go down, but the moment you reach rock bottom, Janet, there is nowhere else to go but up. And I think um, this is where we are at as Kenyans at the moment. We are at a point where we are so pressed at a wall, so we are fighting back with all that we have. And the only thing we need to do is look at this monster that is harming us. We need to look at it and to address it and to confront it. This is the only way that we are going to win. So I don't think that people really are fatigued. It is just that people are being threatened. People are being, sub, you know, someone is submitting you into into silence so and we are being pushed to a wall to such a place that now we are going to uh, to get to push back when we look at um the situation today and the conversations going on even political conversations and uh, around the scope a lot of people are saying okay you know what um there's a lot of anarchy now there's a lot of looting there's a lot of you know businesses that are losing their money and i just want to say that Money is not more important than lives. Money is not more important than justice. We can talk about peace, but we can have peace and hunger. They can coexist at the same time. We can have peace and have exploitation. They will coexist in the same space. We can have peace and we can have injustice. So having peace is not a preclude to having justice. What we are asking for is justice. What we are going out to get is justice. And in the words of one of our forefathers, known as Dedan Kimadi, he says, it is better to die on our feet than to live on our knees. So it, we cannot keep on living on our knees because we are scared. It is better to die on our feet fighting and getting this justice that we want than it is to live on our knees. And also I'll finish, oh, before I finish, with a Thomas Sankara who says that any soldier who does not have an ideology is a potential criminal. So a soldier in this case does not just mean the military people or the police, people who are fighting for their rights and their justice. And all of us who are going out there are soldiers. So we need to have an ideology and see what is this that we really want to change. And really what we want, for example, it's not just Ruto to go. We want Ruto and Rutoism, whereby uh, you're picking people because they're your friends, where we have people who are uh, in cabinet and, you know, they're not really qualified, where we have the police using excessive force, which they should not be doing. So we want an overhaul of the system. And when we have this uh, in our mind, then we should be able to get to where we're going. I want to finish... Um, with a song because I said I was an artist and this song speaks truth to power and uh, it goes out to all of us for us to be able to be uh, uh, to be enhanced to have power to go out for um, can you save your song for I would love because I want to give you the moment to so once we finish before we allow you oh. to leave just so that we can kind of end with that is that okay right. yeah because i'm looking forward to that and i think it's um Kasmo, she said something interesting sometimes you're back to a corner and you have two options you fall down or you push back um where can people find the courage the conviction to push back yet they feel they're faced with anarchy with death with threats with intimidation how can we collectively push back and what happens next? Uh, I'll start with a rather radical statement. Uh, 
There's this word that everybody is afraid of, the word anarchy. I don't know why you're playing safe around that word. Anarchy is a political ideology. And it is a political ideology that the government wants to push us to. And I say this because if you analyze what the word anarchy is, it's just basically anti-Rutoism. Because what uh, the outgoing President Ruto is running is akin to what could be described as, um, and, and, and pardon my largesse, a kakistocratic democracy. In the sense that the only way you can qualify for this government is if you're utterly corrupt, if you're utterly inept and uneducated, and if you have a name that has bedeviled this country for long. So sorry to break it to you, fellow comrades in uh, the Catholic University of East Africa and all other school-going children, that you will never be in government because you're educated and you stand for something. Dimwits all of you. That is what we are fighting. I need us to be alive to this reality because that informs our now and that will inform our what next. I used to be shy of this question, but Kenya is akin to, I would liken our beloved country to a beautiful woman in a narcissistic and abusive relationship. And asking that woman what next is after she bears her heart out to you and you tell her wa sauta do. It is imperative, it is incumbent upon us to, one, figure out how do we take our friend from this situation because otherwise we run the risk of victim blaming. And a lot of the times the people who are asked what next are the victims. It has never been to the powerful people because they know exactly what is now and they know that up to a hundred generations they will be sorted off the blood of your backs. And they use your blood to sign political deals. That's all that's needed. Um, Kitambo, it used to be signatures. Nowadays, the more lucrative thing in my analysis is the blood of young men. Not even for rituals or anything, because you guys are not that important. I need to remind you, when you're walking around, don't you dare think that you're a human being. You're nothing in this country as a young person. We despise you and we hate you. And that is why when uh, there are police excesses and we go on the streets, we are told, tone down. Between you and a headless chicken, I see no difference. This is how we push back. It is in the remembrance of the cruelty that this regime has meted upon us. When you remember that corruption is akin to genocide, when someone steals money that was meant for vaccines, when someone steals money that's meant for higher education, when someone steals money that's meant for food, it should anger you because there are millions who will never get to see the light of day. We push back because of the resolve we have while saying, Daima Sisi wa Kenya. We will push back because what next looks like this? We will deal circumferentially with this government. We will root it out. We will ensure that all these corrupt uh, officials face the law. We will ensure that rogue policemen, and it has gotten to a point where we have to be very radical in our communication in the sense that abnormal behavior during abnormal times is normal behavior. The state is trying to push young men and women to violence because they cannot reason. That is why the only way the state can deal with you is if they criminalize you yeah. because they know they can manipulate criminal law. We push back by remembering the comrades that we have lost. We will okay. push back because we are Kenyans and as my sister and comrade Masita Rus would say, Kenya ni home. Thank you for that powerful statements there. I know we're really short of time and there's still a